video to run here. He's going to be talking to us about Usir again, about the Pram stack. I can't decide whether um, whether the Pram stack is an invention of admiration or whether Reese has just been trolling me for the last three years. But uh, but I'm going to play his his talk and then then I'll ask him whether he's he's been trolling me after after the talk is over. So uh, so here we go. The the Pram stack, not just as an idea, but in production this year. Welcome Habari and Wagwan. This is the Pram stack in production or episode three of Pram stack on Postage Day <laughs> using it in production. Before I dive into the potentially episodic nature, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Reese, founder and the CEO of Arkindom. We are a small company based in Kingston, Jamaica. We delve in all things spatial, and we primarily have clients that are in the electric utility and power distribution sector. And of course, we are all in on PostgreSQL and PostGIS. I can be found on the interwebs as Reese Alistair. I'm on GitHub, I'm on Twitter, or what was recently called Twitter, and I'm also on LinkedIn. Do feel free to contact me if you ever wanted to shoot the breeze about PostgreSQL, PostGIS, the plethora of PostgreSQL extensions, and just how fantastic PostgreSQL is. Alrighty, now that you know who I am, let us deal with the potentially episodic nature of slide number two. At the 2021 incarnation of PostGiste, I give a presentation called Hurricane Prediction Accuracy Analysis using the Pram stack. This would be episode number one. Last year, in 2022, Brian Timoney presented Skating to Where the Puck is Going to Be, Why SQL is the Future of Full Stack Analytics. And even though it didn't contain the term Pram Stack, if you had watched that awesome presentation, it's not too far-fetched to see it as the spiritual successor to the presentation given in 2021. Therefore, this would be episode number two. And of course, the current presentation, the one you're watching right now, is episode number three. Who knows what next year will bring? Potentially a fourth episode. So, a brief agenda um, is in order. We will first revisit what the Pram stack is, talk a bit about what production means, and then jump into Livewire. What is it and why is it different from 99% of all other web applications out there? So, the Pram stack. Before we get into what the Pram stack is, let us refresh ourselves as to what a software stack is. A software stack is a collection of software components that work together to support the execution of an application. Popular examples include the LAMP stack, which would be Linux, Apache, MySQL, and Perl, or Python, or PHP. The mean stack, which would be like Mongo, Express, Angular, and Node. The Mern stack, Mongo, Express, React, and Node. The Jam stack, it's just JavaScript, APIs, and markup. Um, so those are examples of very popular stacks. Uh, the Pram stack is PostGIS, OGR, FDW, HTTP and GZIP, and these are all PostgreSQL extensions, primarily written by the same person. Once again, I will leave it to the intrepid audience member to figure out what Pram is referring to. Having reestablished what the Pram stack is, let's talk about using it in production, and what do I mean by production? In episode one, the entire premise was slightly tongue-in-cheek, even though the analysis that was undertaken was spot on. Similarly, Brian's presentation, while a tour de force of post-gist functions, especially from the raster side of things, wasn't set up to be particularly production ready. So this episode, we will be speaking about using it in production. And by production, I mean an actual web app that has paying clients. 
So I'll consider an application production ready when it sat satisfies several criteria. These include functionality, reliability, scalability, security, maintainability, and observability. And having satisfied all of these, it is, we like to think that it is also performant. So, Livewire.io, what is it? Well, it is a software as a service for electric utilities to model their distribution networks. It's a web app where distribution engineers can upload a network model, or potentially if they are in an enterprise plan, they can fork or clone the existing instance that is connected to their legacy database, or if they're using PostgreSQL even better, they can operate devices, do upstream and downstream traces on one or more phases and calculate metrics such as SAFI and SADI. And this is all built on top of the PRAM stack. Before I dive into Livewire, let's look at how a typical web app is architected. Generally, we split it into three layers, the presentation layer, the application layer, and the data layer. You'd consider the uh, application data layer, the application and the data layers to be the back end, and the presentation layer will be the front end. Generally speaking, the application is speaking to the database through an ORM. Normally, or usually, the application is a framework of some sort. It could be a micro framework like Python's Flask or Bottle or something more heavyweight like Django, Laravel, or Zope. Now, while this is a very simplified scenario, the reality is that it looks more like this, and the data layer is usually underappreciated and underutilized, and you'll find people doing things like pulling out lots of rows of data to do an average in the application. Forgetting that the SQL language has a plethora of functions for doing statistics, aggregates, and general mathematics. All right, so back to Livewire. As I had mentioned, Livewire is built on the PRAM stack, but Given that the PRAM stack is a set of PostgreSQL extensions, when you're using the PRAM stack, you are by default using PostgreSQL. So it's not just a PRAM stack, it's the PRAM stack and PostgreSQL stack, or it's the PP stack, which doesn't sound wonderful. Let's go with the P squared stack. Given that I'm dealing with electrical networks and they are very linear in nature, usually stored as lines and points, it lends itself to be modeled on a graph. And so we employ another PostgreSQL extension, PG routing. So we're now up to three Ps. It's the P cubed stack. But it is a web app and PostgreSQL does not speak HTTP. So another part of the entire system is Postgres with a T, a yet another P, we're in up to a P to the fourth. The P quartic stack or the exponential stack, who knows? But what is Postgres? So Postgres is a standalone web server that turns your PostgreSQL database directly into a RESTful API. The structural constraints and permissions in the database determine the API endpoints and operations. But what does that really mean? Well, here is some DDL for the main Livewire table in the application. It is a pretty standard table, nothing fancy. With Postgres, I now have a fully functional endpoint that I can get, post, put, patch, and delete to. Full CRUD and zero code. Well, <clears throat> no extra code other than the DDL to create the table. Furthermore, with a little bit of row-level security and some policies, I now have a table where authenticated users will see what they are supposed to see. 
and all of this just from database configuration. While Postgres makes RESTful endpoints from tables, I do need to write some logic, and that is done using PLPG SQL. Of course, if you're so inclined, there are several other options for writing code in the database, PLPython, PLPerl, PLV8, etc. So let's take a look at the entirety of Livewire. So again, PostgreSQL is the database. Again, the PRAMP stack consisting of these four extensions plus PG routing. Beyond that, there is PG Sodium, which is used for crypto. And I don't mean crypto as in Bitcoin. I mean crypto as in cryptography for passwords and the like. PG Trigram is used to help with full text search. There is PG JWT that is for creating JSON Web Tokens. PG Tab for testing. PLPG SQL, as I mentioned earlier, is the procedural language used in all the functions. PG Cron, which is a scheduler in the database, I admittedly abuse and I use it <laughs> not how it was intended. And finally, Livewire, which is a extension that I created, and this is where all the logic that does the modeling of the electrical network lives. So this is it. This is everything. And it is all in the database. There is nothing with the exception of the front end and Postgres, which is, you know, sending stuff to the front end. All the logic, authentication, any HTTP requests or API calls are done through the extensions that live on or in the database. So here is my high-level overview of Livewire I.O. <clears throat> so both application and data layers live in PostgreSQL. How do I handle database changes and uh, versions, migrations? There is a lovely bit of kit called Skitch that integrates wonderfully well with Git and handles deploying changes to the database. It deploys changes to both production, staging, testing, and when coupled with PGTAP, I can test the entire database from top to bottom on every deployment and if there are any issues, I can roll it back. So PGTAP allows you to test your database, not just verifying the structure of your schema, tables, etc., but also exercising any views, procedures, functions, rules, or triggers. It even can test for privileges on users. It can test that users exist. And it can test that users exist with certain privileges. So it's very, very comprehensive. And of course, all your testing is written in SQL with SQL functions. So for the SQL lover, it is fantastic. So whenever my friends and I link up, these are my developer friends who are in the uh, tech space, I often, after waxing lyrical about PostgreSQL, I get a comment like this. You know, my response is, if you think PostgreSQL is just a hammer, you are very uninformed. The reality is PostgreSQL is not just a database. It is more of a platform. Given that it was built from the outset to be extensible, and the extensibility is pretty trivial, it now has support for complex data types, advanced indexing, a plethora of procedural languages, foreign data wrappers, 
custom aggregates, custom window functions, you know, a, a robust trigger system. And it is pretty trivial to set up for, for scalability and high availability. If you think PostgreSQL is a one dimensional tool limited to typical database tasks, you definitely have to think again. It is tremendously powerful. It's more of a toolkit than a single tool. And finally, before I go, this is my one recommendation. Kind of fine recommendation it is. Uh, thank you, Reese. Are you there on the other end of this line? You're muted right now. Is oh, is. oh, I can kind of barely hear you. So let's see, let's see how well this works. I'm sure. echoing through oh, your uh, computer right now. I can hear myself coming myself. back in my ears. Oh. And I cannot hear yourself. I cannot hear yourself. Nope. Nope. You're silent. You're silent. Can you hear me now? Oh, uh, I can hear you, but. Okay. There we go. Okay, yes. Okay. Yay. Okay. We can hear you. So I want to start off with a question which has, of course, been bugging me for a year, which is Are you trolling me, Reese? Um, it's it's thirty <laughs> percent trolling, seventy percent admiration. You know? okay. Yeah, that seems like a fair balance. So that's 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 a reasonable balance. Um, all right. Uh, so you you mentioned, but then never never explained like that you were abusing PG Cron. So I, I have to ask, what are you doing to PG Cron? Oh, so I couldn't find uh, a simple extension in PostgreSQL to do um one off tasks. Um, so, uh, PG Cron, I think in the past year gained the ability to do, um, you know, scheduling at the second level, like, you know, one or two seconds. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I'll schedule a task, uh, for one second and then the task will kill itself when finished. So right. that's basically so it. That, so you manually reproduce the old Unix at command. Pretty much. Yeah, nice. Um, so yeah, Livewire sounds like a cloud project that's grown out of consulting experience. I assume like you met someone who was running a power company and learned their problems and decided, hey, there's other people with power companies that I can serve them too. So tell me yeah, about I, your pivot from consulting to product. How has that come? It's, well, I used to work for a power company actually. So uh, I, I had you know like proper inside knowledge um, and was seeing what they were using at the time. Um, and the there are a couple, a couple cav not caveat, a couple problems with what they were using. For example, so uh, I wrote LiveWire to basically be better than the existing, uh, you know, product right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how's the uptake? It's okay. It's still in beta. Um, mm -hmm. So I only have three companies testing. Only three. Um, That's pretty good. <laughs> Three, in beta. Um, <laughs> Three potential customers. Good job. Yeah. So it's the, the, the feedback is good. Um, I'm not an electrical engineer. So there are, even though I was in a power company for quite a while, there are some things I didn't think of. So, you know, this beta period is, is very good to get feedback and make changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things like I find working and, and I love the database and like putting everything in the database. And I love the idea of the database as an integration environment. But one of the things I find working with it is compared to the edit test cycle, you know, change code, try, change code, try, change code, try. Mm -hmm. Like for a scripting environment, it's an incredibly tight loop. I've spent all my time working in C and C++. The loop's a little longer because I've got edit, build, try. Mm -hmm. And that build cycle can be long or short depending on the size of the project. What does that cycle look like with such a database centric workflow? Like, what is the make equivalent of make in your? Um, all right. So, uh, I had mentioned Skitch in the presentation. Um, yeah, yeah. 
And prior to Sketch, I was actually developing, it was a bit harder. So I would develop the application actually as an extension in PostgreSQL, right? And you know, if you're doing PostgreSQL extensions, you have that make, test, install, check kind of um, mm -hmm. thing. Um, Sketch, I find, is better. Um, and it allows me to do deployments, just testing, to staging, to production. And uh, PG Tap is fantastic. Um, it integrates with PG Tap. So in the Sketch cycle, literally what you do is you write um, your, deployment, your deployment script, uh, rollback script, and a verify script. And uh, once you type deploy, it tries to deploy it, does the verification and testing. If all is mm -hmm. well, perfect. If yeah. not, it will throw it back for you. So that's that. Sketch has been a game changer, really. It's fantastic. Neat. Mm -hmm. um, Post REST in production. Mm -hmm. Security, like what's the what's the security story with Post REST? I noticed you had like the Java Web Tokens things. Like, how does that actually plug into a security oh. model? All right. So it uses the JWTs for effectively authorization. Um, mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't use GWTs for like session stuff, just to authorize that, okay, I can access this endpoint. And so the, <coughs> excuse me, the JWT is done in the database and is sent back with um, Postgres to the client. No, how the client handles it is important yeah. because if you try and store GWTs, you know, in local storage or somewhere, that's problematic. Um, so. On the client side, it's stored in memory, and uh, there's a tried and true, um, tried and true what's that method where you have it in memory and you have a refresh to refresh token. Um, so that's pretty well fleshed out. Mm -hmm. And once you have your your token expiration time, it's pretty short. Then you know you should be okay. Okay, and that binds your web front end to the back end service, so that yeah, the logins mm -hmm. all sync up. Cool. Yeah. Okay. See, so do you have any questions on the chat? No, Brian says that he's going to be adding yet another <laughs> chapter to the pram stack in the classic Brian way. I can't wait. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's it for me. Thank you very much once, sir, for once again coming and uh, taunting me in your low key manner. <laughs> Not a I've problem. Enjoyed. I've enjoyed it, and I look forward to uh, to hearing how Livewire goes over the next year, and then also what uh, what you come up with next. It's pretty awesome. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Reese. Take mm -hmm. care.